Hey, good evening, good evening, and praise you, the Lord. Come on and give God some praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Praise you, the Lord, and blessings, blessings to the family and friends of Lord of Harvest Ministries. Good evening, guests alike. Amen. Good evening. I'm Bishop Timothy Branch. Amen. Pastor here at Lord of the Harvest Ministries, joined by my wife, none other than Pastor Pastor Olivia Branch. Amen. And Ashanti, she's also online with us on tonight, helping us uh, helping us virtually usher. Amen. And do many other things as well in support of our of our video broadcast on tonight. So we're excited to be with you for this week's discipleship class. Amen. Promises to be a great one. Amen. As on tonight. Tonight we're continuing on. Continuing on in our True to Life Bible study series, wherein we're looking at we're looking at several. Just so happen that we happen to be in a segment where we're looking at the lives of different leaders that God used in the Bible. And so on tonight, we're looking at we're looking at a great woman of God. Is we're going to look at Deborah, Amen. And we're going to look at the lessons Deborah and lessons in leadership, Amen. As, as she was as she was being used, Amen. As a as a great judge and a prophetess, Amen. To the nation of to the nation of Israel, Amen. And so we're going to look at her on tonight for her leadership, for an example, and we're going to look at uh, for tonight. We're going to look at the law of respect in in the in the leadership leadership Bible by John C. Maxwell. He outlines outlines the law of respect, you know, and he, and the key thought key thought that he that he shared in his in in the word. It said he said that people naturally follow leaders stronger than themselves. Amen. Did you hear that? Read that. I'm saying that again real slow. It says, people naturally follow leaders stronger than themselves. Amen. And and, and when it, when I when I began examining, when I began studying that that thought, I was like, wow, that is powerful. Leaders, people, excuse me, people naturally follow leaders stronger than themselves. That means, you know, and the thing about it is that when you talk about leadership. There's always a what a succession of leaders. Yes, there there may be a senior leader, and then there's a subordinate leader. Then there's two or three or four other subordinate leaders to that one subordinate leader, and so everyone follows, um, follow follows someone in a, in a hierarchical uh, leadership model, and so we're going to look at this law of respect, Amen, on tonight through the lens of Deborah, and we're going to see we're going to see how she how she called to her Barack, amen, and how people were drawn to her, drawn to her for her leadership and, and look at the characteristics and traits that she demonstrated as we glean and to learn from her from her example that there's there's some some validity, amen, and some very, some very uh, strong spiritual truths for us to to glean from examining the life of Deborah on tonight. So we're we're in Judges chapter four, verses one through sixteen is where we'll primarily be for our uh, for our time of, of study on tonight, and so Amen. We 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 tonight tonight we want to for those for those that are with us uh, organically and part of part of the Lord Harvest Ministries family. You have the you have the outline, Amen. So you you have you have the template for the for the lesson on tonight, and we definitely want to make this as we talked about before. We want to make these uh, Bible studies interactive, Amen. So we we're, we're looking for looking for some for some conversation. If you have you know input, if you have questions or things um, that that God drops in your spirit you know as we as we talk and talk through the lesson amen please ma'am please sir don't hesitate to drop those things in the feed if you're here in the sanctuary with us please do the same amen hey if you need for us to say hey bishop I got something throw your hand in the air guess what give me the, give me a sign so I'll slow up and, and allow you to uh allow you to add, add to the Bible study because again we want to want this to be a dialogue you know we don't want this to be straight lecture i mean just just <clears throat> just bishop just talking amen. amen so we're gonna again we're in judges chapter 4 verses 1 through 16 on tonight talking about the law of respect looking at a key thought looking at a key thought that people naturally follow leaders stronger than themselves amen this, this is a great this is a powerful it's a powerful uh powerful powerful lesson on tonight so before we go any further let us bow for a word of prayer Dear Lord, our God, thank you, thank you, Lord God, for the for the awesome privilege, Lord, to to come into Thy presence, Lord, and to and to share Your Word yet once again in the name of Jesus, Father. Forgive us of our sins, our trespasses that we committed during this day. In the name of Jesus, cleanse us afresh, cleanse us with Hyssop that we might be clean. Look upon the hearts and hearts and minds of Thy servant. Cleanse us, 
Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Use us mightily, Lord God, in the service of thy people, in the name of Jesus. And speak your word. Speak your word on tonight, Lord God, and bring forth clarity, Lord God, concerning the law of respect. Just show us, Lord God, through the life of Deborah and through the life of Barak, Lord, how, how respect, Lord God, help her command, command many, command blessings upon many people, Lord God, because they submitted to her her leadership will willfully in the name of Jesus. Now, God bless you people. Bless your people that have logged on, that have come, that are here with us presently. Lord God, we pray that your word will fall upon good ground tonight in the name of Jesus and have your way in the midst of us, Lord. And bless us, bless us. Keep this, keep the airwaves open. This we all ask tonight with faith in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So yes, we're we're gonna we're gonna begin. We're gonna begin in in by reading the scriptures and then we're just going to go back and go back and, and walk and talk through the law of respect on tonight. So with, with that being said, I'm going to begin reading from Judges chapter four, verses one through four, I believe it is. I'll, I'll begin reading. And the word of the Lord reads, when Ehud was dead, the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who dwelt in Hashareth, Hagon. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Listen to this. For Jabin had 900 chariots of iron, and for 29 years, he had harshly oppressed the children of Israel. So they're in bondage. They're in bondage based upon based upon their based upon the evil that they did, you know, worshiping, uh, worshiping other gods, intermarrying, doing all kind, committing all kind of sin that God clearly told them not to do. And so here here is here is Jacob with this great, great army that Syria leads and they were oppressed for 29 years. So they cry unto the Lord and now now enter into the scene, Deborah. Verse number four. Now, Deborah, a prophet, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at the time. Matter of fact, I'll just I'll just keep reading. And she would sit under the palm tree between Ramah and Bethel in the mountains of Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. Then she sent and called for Barak, the son of Abinoel, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, go and deploy your troops at Mount Tabor. Take with you 10,000 men of the sons of Naphtali and of the sons of Zebulun. And against you, I will deploy Sisera the commander of Jabin's army with his chariots and his multitude at the river Kishon. And I will deliver him into your hand. Hmm. So here, so here, here, there's a few things, few things to unpack just as we start, just as we start our Bible study on tonight as we're talking about Deborah and we're talking about the law of respect. You see here, you see here in verse number, in verse number four, that for one, She's a, she's a judge. You know that there were periods in time where God used what both kings and judges to rule, right? To rule and to and to issue judgment over His people. And so Deborah, here she is sitting, and 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 the word of the Lord says that the people, as she was sitting underneath a tree, people people would come to her for judgment. First and foremost, you know, there 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 is for people to come to you. She didn't go. Notice, notice what it says. She didn't go out seeking people to to administer judgment to. People came to her, right? And you can look at it and say, by virtue of her position, surely people came to her because hey, she's a judge, and so she shouldn't be out traveling. But again, looking at it from looking at it from 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 a lens where people respected her leadership, her counsel, the word that she gave, they came seeking her out. Amen. And they allow they allow her to 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 judge, to judge matters, matters between them. And so first and foremost, she was respected by others. 
Amen. Obviously, obviously she was a woman. She was a woman that was that was truly deserving of respect. Amen. But they allowed her to judge and settle their disputes for them. So respect was key. Amen. Respect was key. Amen. For her as a leader. Then then as, as, we, as we go a little bit further, you know, uh, looking at looking at uh, verse number verse number verse number five, I think it's yeah, verse number five, where, where it says that and she would sit, she would sit there and, and they will come unto her. And then she she uh, uh, the word came forth and says, has not the Lord God of Israel commanded to go and deploy troops? Right. And so and, and, and the question that the question that the verse ends up with is, will will I will deliver him into your hand? So all but already assuring them that what they would they would obtain the victory. They meant they would obtain the victory. But then come along. And as we continue, as we continue to read in the verse, verse underneath the next verse, verse number eight, pick, pick back up and finish reading. It says, with verse number eight, and Barak said to her, if you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. So she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey watch this you are taken for the lord will sell Caesarea into the hand of a woman then deborah arose and went with barak to kadesh and barak called zebulon and naphtali and kadesh he went up with ten thousand men under his command and deborah went up with him so 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 the, the next the next next thing we want to want to want to want to glean and to pay close attention to is that Deborah being a respectful and honorable honorable uh, leader in her own right she would then be about seeing the the quality of life and the standard of life for others being raised amen and not only that, not only that, she would she would uh, stand firm on her own personal convictions. Because guess what, Barack he 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 expressed what doubt, but he said, "If you go with me, then what? I will go. I will go." Any question? Any anything out of the bat? Once again, you know, pointing towards you know um, the unrighteous and the wicked. Mm -hmm. um, Searching for those that you know can lead, mm -hmm. you know, and, and direction. People are, are essentially looking for direction. And I, I like how I, the the thing I really like is that Barack. He's a man of warfare. He's a man. He's a he's a man that's skilled that's skilled in leading in leading men in warfare. And because of the word, get this. He wanted the word to go with him. The word bearer. The one that was judging on the behalf of God, he wanted her to go along with him. And, and the thing I like is that Deborah was firmly rooted and grounded in her convictions. Yes, she was. She gave him a word on the behalf of God. But as a revered leader, she was not just just rest on her laurels based on her position and stay in the rear, stay in the rear. Amen. He asked that she would go and she did what? she decided to go to go along with him and so when you're talking about a man of warfare respecting again look at what he did he respected her for her leadership and 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 he was like okay once she once she agreed to once she agreed to go she said so sure i will go with you then he did what he issued the commands just as what she had get she she had given them to him from the lord cuz in verse number in verse number, uh, yeah, the, the second half of verse number nine, it says, then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And then verse number 10, and Barak said, I mean, Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh. He went up with the 10,000 men under, under his command and Deborah went with them. Amen. Amen. And so again, again, uh, a, a revered leader, a revered leader also also possesses uh, uncommon security and maturity. 
right? Possession is uncommon, uh, security and maturity, meaning that meaning that they're 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 secure in 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 deferring and or giving glory to the to the one that has called them and or chosen them for leadership. You know, just like Jesus, when Jesus was walking upon the earth, he always what made sure that he gave glory to whom he gave glory to God, the father. He didn't attempt to take any glory for himself. And the thing I like about what Deborah did in this lesson as well is that she said that um, look what he said. He says that. Uh, where is that at? When she when she deferred, when she said that, hey, in verse number nine, she says, so so she said, I will surely go up with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for who for you in the journey you are taking. Right. Because for the Lord will sell Caesarea into the hand of who into the hand of a woman. So she let him know, hey, I, and I'm OK. I'm OK. I'm secure. I'm secure in who I am. But she did let uh, she let Barack know that, hey. There'll be no glory in this for you, right? And so, just think, just just think, just think about that. You know, being a she, she was such a leader that that Barack respected her for her leadership. Then she was able, then she was able to say, you know what? Hey, just know as you go and as I go and travel with you, that there'll be no glory in this for you. Amen. Talking to a great and mighty man of warfare talking to a great and mighty man of warfare and you know hey he he does what basically salutes salutes and and goes out and does exactly what Deborah told him to do amen and so we'll continue we'll continue reading and I, I can't see any I can't see any comments are there any comments in the feed that I missed anything all right so let's let's keep going all right so looking at looking at verse number verse number 11 the word reads now Heber the Kenite of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, has separated himself from the Kenites and pinched, pitched his tent near the terebinth tree at Zanam, which is beside Kadesh. And they reported to Sisera that Barak, the son of Abinoab, had gone up to Mount Tabor. So Sisera uh, gathered together all his chariots 900 chariots, chariots of iron, and all the people who were with him from Harosheth, Hagoim, to the river of, of Kishon. Then Deborah said to Barak, now the enemy forces, enemy forces are what? Move into contact. Amen for us military folks. Oops, oh, they got they got intel. They got intel that there's enemy activity taking place. So they do what? Rally this great and massive army. Remember, remember that they had great what? They had, matter of fact, those great those chariots were the equivalent of modern day tanks, right? Because you didn't hear you didn't hear no mention of of Barak and his and his people uh, having such equipment. He had what 10,000 10, men with him, but we want to see we want to see what what happens from here. It says that Deborah in verse number fourteen says Barak up for this is the day which the Lord has delivered to serve into your hand. Has not the Lord gone out before you? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. And the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and all his army with the edge of the sword before Barak. And Sisera alighted from his chariot and fled on foot. But Barak pursued the chariots and the army as far as Harosheth, Hagoim, and all the army of Sisera fell by the edge of the sword. Not a man was left. You know what? Deborah, Deborah, she had experience as a leader, as a respected leader. Typically, typically, you know, every great leader goes through a process of prepara preparation for leadership. Amen. And so Deborah, having been her own successful prophetess in her own right she was a successful judge in her own right before she asked the people to go and fight so look at look at what she look at what she does she she contributed she contributed to the success of others because first and foremost she called in obedience to god she called the people together she called the people together amen in obedience to god then she did what 
she gave the people what a skilled a skilled commander a skilled leader to lead them into combat and then and then they also had what the resources necessary to fight to fight this great army and and most importantly god was with them amen most importantly god was with them and that was that was you know a major a major contributing factor to to barack deciding to deciding to what submit his his leadership here he is just like just like i talked about earlier you know talking about hierarchical leadership where wherein other leaders subject and or submit themselves to other leaders amen he recognized the gift he recognized the grace of god on her life so him being a man of warfare he did what he submitted himself and or he respected he respected her for her gift get this he respected her for her gift Amen. And said, listen, I will I will fight this fight if you go with me. And so because of his willingness to submit, because of his willingness to respect, to respect Deborah as a leader. Guess what? God fulfilled the plan just as he was given unto him. I see you in the back. Um, yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing because in that time, um, it was uncommon. Like I said, it was uncommon for a woman to lead. Yes. And, and you know. The fact that Barack doubted, you mm -hmm. know, um, he doubted his ability, you know, um, we go through that now. Mm -hmm. you know, we have more and more women that are taking leadership roles. Okay. And we have more and more, uh, you know, pretty much naysayers and, and, and doubters, but um, we're not turning this into like a, you know, a gender situation mm -hmm. here, but whatever. But at the end of the day, there was a mission that needed to be accomplished. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, the person that was gifted uh, with the leadership, with the, you know, um, blueprint or, you know, the charge, so to speak, was an uncommon leader. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, even in now, fast forward in, in, into the day's time, mm -hmm. we have to respect, like you've been saying all night, you've been saying all night, we have to respect the gift, the experience. Um, the skills of the uncommon leader because they didn't get it just by okay. you know overnight. Surely they had to go through some something in order to um, uh, to obtain those those uh, leadership skills and and or training. Wow, the thing thing I, thing I like I like Amen. Like you said, not not making it a, a gender a gender based thing, but you can't help but go there. You know, I mean, you're talking about you're talking about the fact that. Here's Deborah. Here's Deborah. She's a woman that, and and listen, here's a woman that God is using. Okay, we can't we can't we can't overlook this this truth. God is using a woman here in Old Testament times. Amen. She's a prophetess. Amen. She is a mouthpiece for God. And here, this 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 great and mighty and strong warrior says that. Listen. I won't I, listen. I hear you. I hear the. Or, I, I understand the mission. I understand the, my capabilities. I know how to employ employ my unit in accordance with its capabilities. But I won't go against this great and mighty army unless the word bearer goes with me. Amen. Unless the mouthpiece of God goes with me, and He didn't care that what it was a woman. Amen. So this, this is this is a great this is a great lesson because. The Bible declares, the Bible declares in what? Proverbs, Proverbs 29 and 18, where there's no revelation, huh? where there's no revelation, the people do what? Cast off restraint. And so here, here you got a, you got Barack, a great man of warfare that realized, man, I need, I'm going to go into war against this, against this great and mighty uh, adversary, but I want the what? The word bearer to go with me. She had the, she had the, the, the word from God and I want, I want the word to go with me. Amen. And so this 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 is a great lesson. I mean, I mean, really, really, you know, talking about the law of respect, respecting those for the gifting of God, for the grace of God that is upon their life. And and again, she she could not be a prophetess if she didn't have what a strong relationship with God. And so here it is, this great man of war fighting uh, ability. He does what? Submits himself and subjects himself to a leader. And he didn't have no what? No qualms about doing it because he wanted what? The word 
the word bearer, somebody that could get a word, somebody that could bring revelation from on high down to him, bring him the right mission set, bring him the right mission orders, and that God will be with them. Amen. And so, man, that, that's, that's that's powerful. And and so, you know, Deborah in this, you know, she was res she was respected. She was respected. She respected those that she was called to serve. She helped uh, exceed the expectation of others in that she helped restore, restore their quality of life, restore peace to the nation, to the nation of Israel. She stood firmly on her convictions. Great leaders do that. Start, stand firmly on their convictions. Hey, if I'm going to, I'm not going to issue an order. They, they train us this way in the military too. Don't issue an order that you're not willing to what? Carry out yourself. You know, don't, don't, you know, don't issue, don't issue an order and not go to the front line, not go to the front line and do what? Check troops to make sure that they're what? Their, their morale and their well their well being is is good, amen. And go with them, amen. And go along with them. Deborah, she stood on her conviction. She, she issued the order from God, and then she was like, "Yes, I'll go with you." Can, uh, Bishop, can you share uh, with us, you know, um, coming from Germany, your experience and you know having, you know, uh, going uh, being submitting yourself and your gift to a woman leadership, and amen. then also can you also share? Um, you know, from your your background and how this transition or this was important for you, your personal uh, your personal experience. Hey Amen. You know this this is a this is a, a that's a, that's a great question. <laughs> that's, that's a very good question. You know, in that um, the organization that organization that I currently serve in, uh, uh, Holy Deliverance Church of God International. Amen. Where the Apostle Benny L. Kelly is is the presiding prelate, amen. She launched the ministry in 1976, amen, in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina, and 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 also uh, engrafted in uh, the international bishop, none other than other none other than my spiritual my spiritual leader uh, in the organization, Bishop Sadie M. Smith, amen. Obviously, they're both they're both women, and so when when uh, it came time to launch the ministry. And I was talking. I was talking to uh, to to the apostle and 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 my and my uh, father in the in the ministry um, about you know my spiritual covering. You know, I was I was super super excited that they both said, "Hey, son, stay right where you stay right where you are." In other words, saying that you don't have to seek you don't have to seek covering with us because guess what? You have you have relationships. You have relationships that you just ne now need to what maintain. And 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 be respect. and respect those respect those leaders for the impartation that they've made into your life up until this point. Amen. Apostle Daniels made an impartation. I mean, Reverend Doctor uh, Herman Scott made an impartation. The, the initial the initial impartation. Apostle Daniels came along and made the next impartation. Bishop uh, Smith was then used to to make the next impartation in my life. And so when it came time to launch the ministry, I was like, with the endorsement of of, of those previous leaders that I had, which happened to be men, they were like, hey, son, stay, stay right where you are. That really did my heart well, because it let me know what I was, what I was being led to do, that it was, it was, it was right. The law, the law of respect, respecting the relationships that, 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 that I, that I already had and were establishing, amen, with these great, with these great women of God that God was using in my life already. Yeah. So, so I didn't, I didn't have any qualms. I didn't have any qualms. So people, people were asking, they were like, Hey, so who, who's your covering, you know, coming out of Germany, coming out of Germany, virtually unknown, only known by people that had, had uh, come across us in the military. Lots of people like, you know, that were at the, at the service and were invited. They were like, Hey, so who you, who, who you going to, you know, who's going to cover your ministry? Cause lots of people were thinking, Hey, you're here in Virginia. People know, people know, you know, you you drop names and people know all the all the bishops, all the apostles in the area. And so, you know, dropping an unfamiliar name, people are like, OK, who is that? And so truly at the installation service, was like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. That, that you know, the wow was in the room as as, uh, as Apostle Kelly came out to, to oversee the services and, and Bishop Smith was there as well. But again, the great women of God were used. You were used and still are being used in my life. Amen. To provide me with wise counsel guidance, covering, nurture in the ministry. Amen. And so, amen. I respect, I respect the grace of God that is upon their lives and, and I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I, I praise God for my journey. Amen. For having them in my life. Amen. Uh, Sister Monette says, God uses many vessels. People put limitations on others. 
Amen. You know what? You know what? Thank, thank you for using. Thank you for using the V word. Amen. Monet. You know. You know. Listen. Thank you. This. This is a great lesson for uh, Pastor Phyllis Lawson of Jesus World Outreach Center in in uh, in Heidelberg, Germany. Amen. Great friends of us of, of our family. Amen. Great, 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 great uh, family friends. You know, I can remember being at a men's conference and me and the Baptist and the Baptist boy and me was wondering why is we at a men's conference. Why is this woman at the men's conference? <laughs> They're already being challenged. In my, see, didn't understand that God was what challenging me in my mindset and some of the limits that I put on, put on, you know, on, on myself and relationships based on, you know, based on based on upbringing to that point. You know, and she went in the midst of that, in the midst of that first men's conference that I went to. And she said out of her mouth, she said, and some of y'all in here caught up on the vessel that God is using right now. <laughs> and I was like, she coming down my street. <laughs> She's stepping all on my toes. Amen. Because I'm one, like I said, I said that to myself, I'm like, man, this is a men's conference. Why is she here at the men's conference? But guess what? She was there. She was there because what? Her husband was there. Right. So she was covered. She And guess what? She also had an assignment. Yeah. She was the vessel. She was one of the vessels that God had placed on assignment to do what? Pour into what? The men. Because she was there to offer a, whim, a woman's perspective. See the, see, the men of God can offer what? A man's perspective. To men that were at the men's conference, but wasn't it good to have a woman of God there to offer a woman's perspective? Because man, yeah, it's good to be at the men's conference and getting the perspective, but then we need to also also have someone there to offer a woman. Yeah, good evening, Pastor Norte from Manheim. It was good to have a woman's perspective shared because many of us are what married. We're married to to, to women that you know, and we need to know how to dwell with dwell with our wives in unity. And Pastor Phyllis was was sharing things about uh, um, women in ministry. Right. She was also sharing about being a wife of a, of a spiritual leader. I mean, so she was she was her her assignment every time I went to the men's conference. Amen. Was a powerful powerful vessel that God used. Amen. To pour into the lives of men like me. Amen. I was wondering why that woman of God was at a men's conference. Right. I like like that you know that you shared about Pastor Phyllis as well. Because once again, when we're talking about the law, law of respect, respect, we also know even though she was married to Apostle Lawson, she at the time was given the authority. She was given the authority. Um, it was yielded unto her to to pour into to the men that were in the conference. I mean, and, and and honestly, honestly, you know, when when you go when you go into prayer. You know, you start planning, planning uh, workshops and conferences and so on and so forth. You do what? You ask God. You ask God. God, who who shall I who shall I invite for these? I, I got these. I got these breakout sessions. I got the main. I got the main stage. I got to feel. Who should I? Who should I use? And God start dropping names in your spirit. <laughs> so shame on Apostle Lawson if he if when he dropped the name of Pastor Phyllis, you, you know, for a speaker, he'd be like. No, God, this is a men's conference. Whoa, 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 whoa. God is the one that makes the assignments for the meetings. Amen. Not not Bishop, not Bishop Branch, not Apostle Lawson, but God. So, amen. We've got, we're all subject to what? A leader that we respect and revere. We're all under shepherds. Yeah. We're all under shepherds. And so God is the one that makes the assignments. So amen. And even, even as you know, you know, one of one of the, you know. It's I can't remember exactly where it is, but, you know, talking about, you know, a woman usher and authority over a man. And so and so that's, you know, lots of lots of different denominations, you know, t teach and believe different things about, you know, women, women preaching. I mean, you'll you'll still find many, many denominations today that say, no, a woman ought not mount the pulpit to uh, to preach. Uh, matter of fact, matter of fact, I was in Georgia in 2011 and uh, and, and, and we came out of the study came out of the study to take the pulpit and there were there was at least one one female pastor that was with us and somebody yelled from the somebody yelled from from up top up oh, she can't go in the pulpit this is in 2011 this is this is in 2011 hey man somebody yelled from up top 
must have been deacon, must have been trustee. So, oh, she can't go put a podium down on the floor so she can so she can speak. I was like, wow. But you know, going back to what I was what I was getting ready to say, you know, in terms of respecting the law of respect, respecting people for the grace of God that is on their lives. My my pastor, uh, Reverend Dr. Herman Scott said, Hey, a woman gotta know she called just like a man do. Amen. He she's gotta know the voice of God. She's gotta know the voice of God. She she gotta know what she heard. Amen. And she got to walk in that grace accordingly. You know, I always say, you know, hey, when people ask about having a woman covering, you know, hey, guess what? If I conduct myself in an orderly fashion, she won't have to usher up authority over me. She won't have to discipline. She won't have to correct me. Amen. Because I, if I submit myself, submit myself to her as being the leader that God has given unto me, she won't have to what? Discipline, discipline me or chastise me if I submit and subject my gifts under her leadership you have something love i saw you i saw your gesture yes um so the other question that i would like to you know just uh touch base you know ask you is you know how does uh the the leadership style or the leadership um being under a male overseer differs from being under a woman overseer once again you know with the lesson about how uh, Barack submitted himself under the authority, you know, can you can you share? I, I think I think uh, you know you know matter of fact, I, in, in looking at uh, you know, I I, th I think I think you know and look and ironically my mother is on my mother's on here too, you know <laughs> when when you talk about when you talk about the differences in a male and, and female overseer, I think that one of the first things that come to mind to me is the difference in, in nurture, in nurturing. You know, a woman instinctively is a nurturer, right? So, so, this, so there's, there's some, there's some, there's some, there's some nurture that you, that, that I find, that I find that is, is refreshing and 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 good for me based on where i am in my in my in my ministry you know to have to have female um uh, overseer wearing hey i get some i get some nurture wearing wearing hey if i had if i had if i had that man if i because again men and women are wired differently lioness operates differently from lion lioness is what hunter providers you know hey hey Go out there, go out there, make the kill, bring back the, bring back and help feed what? Feed the pride. That male line does what? Protects the pride. So there's there's some differences. You know, I, I believe that, you know, um, yeah, that male, that male overseer, you know, will be very, very, very protective. You know, hey, very protective and very possessive of those that those ministries, those, those churches that they oversee, wherein, wherein the female overseer would be very nurturing, very, very uh willing to embrace uh, uh allowing you to what make some make some make some mistakes probably probably not probably not oversee you may not oversee you as as strictly or as tightly as as a male overseer would and so you have some latitude you you have the ability to learn some things uh to learn some things on the move that you know hey a male overseer may restrict hey no you can't do that hey bring that bring that to me bring that to me and let me you know let me help you guide you with guide you into that, guide you through that. Where, hey, you may have the latitude with the female. Not saying, not saying that all female leaders are the same, but just from my own personal experience, I do like having the you know, hey, we're an autonomous church with overs with oversight because we submit ourselves to a hierarchical uh, uh, leadership model. And so, hey, I've, I'm I'm having a great experience, amen, with, with uh, female oversight, amen. Evangelist B, if Rahab never availed herself to be used by God to talk to Joshua and Caleb, maybe the Israelites would have been in the wilderness. God just needs vessels. You're absolutely right, Evangelist B. God needs vessels. And so as we talk about, you know, hey, different male and male and female, you know, just just think, just think about, I mean, where would the church be right now if it wasn't for women in ministry? I mean, I just 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 throw that out there. Where where would the church be? I mean, when we look around, when we look at look around at many churches, guess what? The, 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 I would I would venture to say that what 80 percent, 80 percent of the church is made up of what? It's made up of women. A lot and of the so the difference is now is that we're, we're seeing more women where uh, in positions of leadership. 
we see it. We're seeing more more women as pastors. We're seeing more women as apostles. We're seeing more women as bishops. Then, then you know, at least at least look in my in my what 20, 23, 24 years of ministry, um, yeah, you start to see a lot a lot more a lot more women in, in positions of leadership. Where in the beginning, around two thousand, when I first when I first entered into ministry, you didn't see it. You didn't see a lot, man. If you saw if you saw a female pastor back then, she was still struggling just to be respected just to be respected for saying that in her private time, in her private time, she heard the voice of God, just like I heard the voice of God in my private time. And I went to, I went to that, I went to that pastor that was in my life to, to have it, you know, a, a voice confirm, confirm. Yep. Yep. Son. Yep. You, you, yeah, that's right. You've heard the voice of God for yourself. You know, that voice. And women were still struggling with, with being respected for hearing the voice of God that was calling them into ministry. And so this this lesson here tonight, where we see that, again, a great man of warfare submits himself, submits himself to Deborah. Amen. Because she had what? A relationship with God. She had she was a word bearer for God. And she was what? One that judged soundly. Amen. She judged soundly. And so people were coming to her. People were respecting her. And so he found he had no qualms about submitting himself to Deborah. Okay, Ashanti, did you have a question? Um, I was just going to share that a lot of um, auxiliaries come about by the women that are in the ministry. Um, by, first of all, noticing things that are not necessarily considered problems, but things that most... Um, men in ministry and leadership that they tend to kind of gloss over because they're so, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, driven to ex um, establish the church and preach the word. But it's things that are needed um, within, within the ministry that help to keep, you know, once the word has been brought, um, how is it benefiting the ministry to continue to push the word um, forward. Give me, give me that again. I couldn't, the volume was low on my end, so I couldn't, I couldn't hear much of what you said. Oh, um, I was basically just saying that the different auxiliaries, they come from the women that are in ministry. Um, you know, a lot of women were attributed to paying attention to those small details that most men in ministry or just men in general tend to gloss over and they don't notice. So it's like, you know, the auxiliary for youth ministry come about because, you know, you have families in the church. Well, when the pastor and the husbands are doing the deacons ministry or bringing the word, um, the kids have to get the word, too they're not just going to be there. And then if service runs long, what comes, you know, tends to come after service, you know, you have fellowship and you have um, hospitality ministry and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I uh, you know, talking about talking about the contributions of women in ministry, you know, and, and having a respect, having a respect for, for women in ministry, you know, Paul, Paul and Timothy come to mind, uh, wherein, wherein um, Paul was encouraging his young understudy, Timothy, and he he was encouraging him, uh, and he made mention of his grandmother and his mother. Amen. He made he made mention of Lois and his mother, say, crediting them for making him wise concerning the scriptures that pertain to salvation. So back then, back even back then, women were what being used as spiritual leaders and guides within their own families and providing that initial uh, uh, spiritual rearing and upbringing in the lives of their in, in the lives of their children. So that 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 you know says a mouthful mouthful to me as well. You know, in that Paul made sure made sure to hey remind Timothy hey your spiritual beginnings. Your spiritual beginnings took place because of your grandmother and your mother's willingness to rear you in the knowledge of who God was. And the same is true. Same, you know, men are out doing, like you said, hey, 
uh, involved with involved with the work of the deacons or involved in you know men's fellowship and they're away. They, you know, again, men had the ability to do what? Leave the kids with the moms, leave the kids with the wives, and the wives do what? Provide for the spiritual nurture and upbringing, you know, of the children to make sure that the children, are, okay, Jesus is for you. Introducing the kids to 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 uh, to Jesus in the days of their youth. So you know, I, it's very important that we respect women for their contributions uh, to ministry, uh, ministry in the home, and as well as ministry in the church. And in this in this law of respect, you know, respecting uh, people because uh, they have the grace to to lead upon their lives. It's God given grace. It's the God given grace to lead others in ministry. We have we have to we have to respect that. Not be respect a person just because oh I only I'm gonna only listen to male leaders you know you don't only listen to male leaders at work do you amen so so <laughs> <laughs> yeah we don't we don't only we don't only listen to male leaders at work if that if, if she's the CEO if she's the CFO and you happen to be a, a, a subordinate accountant guess what you adhere to her orders you adhere to her instructions and so same the same the same should be true same should be true in the spirit as well um, yes ma'am the last question uh that that i have you know um and speaking of you know uh those you know gender roles and the uncommon leader and stuff like that mm -hmm. a lot of times um you know men would consider women as being weak you know even the bible says you know uh women are the weaker vessel, so sure. to speak, you know? Mm -hmm. And so how can you encourage in that regard using this this lesson, talking about Deborah, you know, being a judge and and uh Barack submitting himself, how can you, you know, um, encourage or further um, elaborate about that particular description? What do you mean, um you know, a lot of, you know, traditional, you know, traditional mind, mindset, you know, that, well, because the Bible says women are the weak of best, mm -hmm. but then you have, you know, the, the women leaders, and, you know, women pastors or whatever. How can you encourage right now during um, this Bible study talking about, you know, the law of respect and the contributions of women to uh, ministry? And also we have a comment from uh, Sis Monet. Amen. Okay. Yep. Monette, let me deal with that first. Holistically, the church needs needs many to carry out God's mission and reach his people. We cannot do it on our own. We come bringing different gifts for a reason and a purpose. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, Monette. Yeah, different gifts. You look at Ephesians, you look at Ephesians chapter four and talk about, you know, the fivefold ministry gifts. Yep. In that church, in that church. You know, hey, you're going to have all kind of different gifts and talents. We need to be in touch with hey, hey, We need to know those who labor among us. We need to know who, who it is that God has sent into our midst, into our presence. Once we dis once we know uh, of the grace of God that's upon your life, we need to do what? Respect the God in you. Amen. Who did what? Imparted that gift on the inside of you as a vessel for him. Amen. And, and, and allow you allow you to do what God has sent you to the church to do. Amen. Yes. We need we need to allow you to do the work that God has placed you in. Remember, God places people in the body as he as he see fit. People say God send send men and women to Lord of Harvest Ministry as he see fit. So hence, when you come in here, I need to be asking God, God OK, God, why would you send why would you send Monette here? What's on the inside of her? Okay, this this what she got. That what she got. Monette, what's on the inside of you? Okay, that's on the inside of you. That's on, okay. All right, Monette. So I need to I need to understand the gift and the graces on your life, and then and then like the army teaches us to employ your unit with in accordance with what its capabilities. Amen. Amen. Get out the way. Hey, in a combined arms fight, I'm a I'm a supply guy. I don't tell the mortarman how to shoot mortars. I I, I supply mortars to the mortarman so that they can do what do 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 shoot mortars. Amen. Pastor Narte, God always rewards a life yielded to you're absolutely right, Pastor Narte. We cannot go wrong when we yield. That's right. When we yield ourselves. Amen. In obedience to God. Amen. You know what? As I mentioned, as I mentioned, Bishop Smith on early on tonight. Amen. As I mentioned her on tonight, 
I was sent back to Germany. I was sent back to I was sent back to Germany uh, for corrective training. Amen. I left my post without being properly relieved uh, in 2008. I got sent back to Germany. As soon as I got off the plane, people was asking, hey, hey, Pastor, you're back in Germany. So you, you get ready to start passing again. I was like, I don't know. I don't know about that because I what? I failed a class. I told you I failed a class. I left Germany because I got tired of wrestling with people. And so I go to I go to I go to a church where Bishop Smith is. And she says she says something very rare, something very unusual, something that caught my ear. She said, I need help. And to, and to hear a pastor say, I need help. Realizing that what? Hey, I can help. I can help, but not realizing that God was going to use her to teach me a lesson in long suffering. Amen. By watching her ministry, by watching her, by watching her being God's chosen, by watching her being God's anointed and watching people come up against her and watching God do what? Sustain her in her office, elevate her, elevate her in, in that place in spite of people. Man, I learned a great lesson for, for what I'm doing right now. Amen. To not be moved by people, but to be moved by God. By watching what? A woman in ministry. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, whether they call her preacher, pastor, bishop, mother. Amen. She remained unmoved. Amen. And continued to serve. And I, need, and I, need, I, needed, that, I needed that example. I needed that witness for what I'm doing right now. Amen. And I learned it under her leadership. Amen. Amen. Yes. Those who honor me, I will honor. And you know what, Pastor Narte? Somebody, matter of fact, matter of fact, somebody said in Germany, somebody, somebody said in Germany, I'm going to take Pastor Apostle Boswell. He said, he said, God is going to honor you guys. God is going to honor you guys because of your willingness to submit your leadership to Bishop Smith. And he did not lie. He did not lie because of our willingness to do what? submit ourselves amen at least many people many people out here many people are outside the will of god right now not in their assignment because they want what submit their gift to somebody else you got to first show yourself faithful to somebody else before god give you anything you can have all the idea you can have all the vision you can have all the all, all that you can have all the training you want but until you submit that gift to somebody amen first that's doing it already you won't get yours Amen. But love, I want to deal with your question. Well, your question, your question again. Give me that. Give me that again. You, you, you answered it. I answered it. Yeah. Uh, uh, based on just, just, just before, just to make sure. And I, and I like, I like, I like this. I like this on tonight because truth be told, truth be told, the the, the man. I, I want, I want our, I want these to be conversations. I want these to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bring the meat. Throw it on, throw it on the, throw it on the grill. But then there should be some conversation to come out of this. So, so tonight is, this, this is, this is how, this is how I would love to flow. Amen. The, you know, this has been a wonderful lesson in that you know there are a lot of uh, women and men that are out there wandering aimlessly mm -hmm. because of you know um, traditional mindsets or mm -hmm. you know not being properly taught, you know, the word and it, women, there are a lot of women leaders out there that need, you know, this type of encouragement in mm -hmm. this lesson um, because yes, like you shared, you know, they hear the voice of God, that God is calling them in this, in this hour. Um, and so this lesson is very much an encouragement to those who feel on the outside, those women who feel on the outside because they feel like their voice is not being heard, even though they heard the voice of God. Mm -hmm. You know, they heard for themselves those women leaders, mm -hmm. evangelists, pastors, teachers, prophets, you know, heard for themselves the mm -hmm. voice of God calling them into, you know, ministry. And yet, there's not someone to, you know, uh, you know, uh, authenticate or stand by them Order. or to help, you know, uh, encourage them to stand on their call. Yeah. And so just based on the scripture about, you know, the woman being the weaker vessel. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, you know, 
that that scripture, matter of fact, it's it's in First Peter chapter three, verse verse seven, where it basically talks about husbands. Uh, get this, husbands likewise dwell with them. I'm talking about husbands and wives, understanding, giving honor to the wife, giving. Listen, not 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 holding it against her or weaponizing it, but rather rather giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel. Yeah, see, that's that that reads totally different. See, see, you know, from a chauvinistic perspective, you can say, oh, it's, I'm the man. No, nah, buddy, you're supposed to do what? Honor that wife. Because what? A wife is a good thing. Blessed is the man who find a wife. Because then when you find a wife, you obtain favor from the Lord. Because you've done what? You found a wife. Then you got to do what? Honor her as the weaker. Okay, yes, I, I realize my wife is the weaker vessel. So, yeah, I ought to take out the trash without murmuring. Yeah, I, ought to, I probably ought to, you know, wash the car without murmuring. Yeah, I probably ought to take the car to get the service because, yeah, my wife, she, she don't need to be doing it. Yeah, I probably ought to cut the grass because, you know, yeah, my wife, you know, yeah, she might enjoy that. But, you know, she shouldn't have to do that. Take care of the kids. Yeah, she's she taking care of the kids. She shouldn't have to go outside and then do all the landscape. Men take care of the kids, kids as well. But but the scripture says that, hey, giving honor to them as the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life. Why? Why do you want why do you want to honor her as the weaker vessel? So that your prayers don't be hand, hindered, man. So get this. Get the get a pride, get a pride for chauvinistic man going before the throne of grace that doesn't honor his wife as the weaker vessel. <laughs> You wonder why your prayers not being answered? There's your answer. There's your answer. It could be it could be a prideful pastor. It could be a prideful pastor, not not, you know, mis misusing misusing women in ministry. I wonder why guys guys resisting, you know, you know, you and your your ministry desires. You want to do this. You want to do that. Hey, you got you got you got women here. Why you, you don't want to use them? You know. You know, so so just, you know, that, that whole gender thing. I mean, it is a whole conversation. It is a matter of fact for today. It is a, a very relevant conversation. I mean, again, you see women, man, I'm telling I'm tell you, man, there's some great women of God. There's some great women of God out here that I really respect. Hey, I tune into their ministry. Matter of fact, matter of fact, there's some women of God that I listened to before. There's some men of God. Great, powerful and anointed. Yep. I listen to them. There's some people, some celebrity pastors that I won't even I won't even. I won't even, I won't even click on. Them. I won't even give them a view. But there's some, there's some powerful women, locally unknown and known that, yeah, I, I tune into their ministry because again, God, God used them in, in, in phenomenal ways, just like, just like He used men of God in phenomenal ways. Amen. So don't miss out. Don't miss out on what God has in store in His various vessels. Being a respective person, looking at the vessel. Amen. As, as Pastor Phyllis said. Don't 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 miss out on what God has placed in his vessel for your good. Amen. Because you, you, you know, you have problems with, you know, this, this gender thing. Amen. So on tonight, tonight we discuss um, we to discuss Deborah and the law of respect, you know, from the vantage point of key thought being that uh, people naturally follow leaders stronger than themselves. We saw Barack Lee what himself be a mighty man of warfare, submit himself, submit himself to Deborah and say, hey, I'll, I'll go. But I need you to go with me. Amen. I, I need the word bearer. I need one that is close to God to go along with me. And, and when she when she agreed, he was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I'll call them 10,000 men to me and we'll go. We'll go in and we'll face that great and mighty uh, army with those iron chariots. Amen. And God did what? God gave them the victory. Amen. So we talked tonight. We talked about I mean, this is a matter of fact, there's, there's more. There's actually more to this lesson. And I probably. I'm going, to, I'm going to come back and, and do part two of this next week. Amen. So if you come back and be with us on next week, we'll talk about um, the Lord delays his coming. Amen. We'll talk about the uh, uh, the the, the different uh, levels of authority that leaders operate from. And so on tonight we talked about uh, the law of respect primarily. And so again, what a what a great powerful lesson. I praise God. I praise God for Pastor O and for everyone. Amen. Who uh, Yes, that'll be this will be the point that we'll pick up with next week. 
levels leaders exercise their authority. That's what we'll that's what we'll pick up pick up next week. Stand in, in Judges chapter four verses one through sixteen. Come back and be with us, and then come back and share. Come back and share with us during our time of uh, a study next week. Remember the woman at the well. Would you? You're absolutely right. Yeah, don't forget. Don't forget. Remember. Remember. Uh, uh, yeah, Paul told him, "Hey, remember." Uh, uh, Sin Tyke and uh, I forgot I forgot the other woman of God, you know, so so there there's there, there were mention of women of God being 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 used by God in in the New Testament. So we're gonna we'll continue this conversation. Bring you bring questions, bring comments, amen. Tell someone tune in with us, amen, as we continue to learn lessons of leadership from Deborah. Amen. Listen, reach out to us, reach out to us, connect with us. Listen, if God says something special to your heart on tonight, doing any one of our services. We'd love to connect with you, especially if you're looking for a church home. We're here. We're here in North Stafford. No, I had to say that we're here in North Stafford. Amen. Looking to serve this, these these great communities that are that are neighboring to us. If you have a desire to connect with the Bible teaching, Bible preaching church, come check us out. Check us out on YouTube. There's lots of lots, lots of content there for you to check out. But really, come come share with us. Come come get to know and discern our hearts. Amen. And we pray that God will speak to your heart and you. Become, become a disciple with us here at Lord of the Harvest Ministries. Listen, you want to give to the ministry, amen, you can do that as well on tonight. We'll take take an offering. You can give to us by way of Cash App, GiveLify, uh, PayPal. You can go to thelordoftheharvest.org, click on the giving tab. You'll, you'll see all the giving options there. Or if you want to mail to us here at Lord of the Harvest Ministries, you can also mail your charitable contributions uh, to us here at Lord of the Harvest Ministries. Uh, P.O. Box 771, Garrisonville, Virginia. For mail purposes, the P.O. Box is in Garrisonville, Garrisonville, Virginia, uh, 22463. Uh, you can you can give to us by way of by way of mail. Amen. So God bless you. We're gonna pray. We're gonna we're gonna pray and bless the offering for those that are, the, those that are giving online on tonight. If you give if you give online, we'll pray and bless the offering and also dismiss. Come back and be with us tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. with the Lord delays is coming for renewal. We thank and praise God for everyone that supports us in all that we do. Amen. And we we just love, we just love serving serving God's people. Amen. So if all hearts and minds are clear, let us pray. Dear Lord our God, thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for the awesome privilege, Lord, of having the opportunity to share the law of respect on tonight in the name of Jesus. Looking at Deborah and looking at Barack, we thank you, Lord God, for the example, the example, Lord God, of one who was a leader in his own in his own uh, regard, who submitted his his ability to one that he esteemed for the grace of God that was upon her life in the name of Jesus. Lord God, bless everyone that was under the sound of our voice on tonight. Lord God, bless us. May your word take root in all of our hearts. May we be made better disciples of you, better followers of you because of the deposit that you made into all of our lives this night through your word. Now, God, look upon look upon the offering in the name of Jesus. Bless every hand that gave. Bless the faithful tithers, Lord God. Lord God, continue to uh, open up windows of heaven that they won't have room enough to receive it. Continue to rebuke the devourers on our behalf as well. In the name of Jesus, bless the, the hands of the cheerful givers. Lord, continue to increase the seed, the measure of seed in which they sown tonight. Increase, increase, increase that seed that they may continue to be able to give, Lord God, cheerfully and willingly and obedient unto you. And bless the hands, Lord God, of those that had a desire to give but were yet unable. Father, we pray, Lord God, that the next opportune time, Lord, that they'll be able to make an offering, Lord God, an offering that is pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Now, God, bless the offering that was made on tonight. Transfer it from its natural use. May it all be used for the upbuilding of thy kingdom and for the expenses, Lord God, of ministry. Bless us. Give us all sweet rest, Lord God. Keep us in your loving care and watch until we're able to unite and worship you again in spirit and in truth. All these things tonight we ask with faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And praise God. Well, listen, go forward. Have a great remainder of your evening. Amen. Rest rest well. And remember here, Lord, the Harvest Ministries. Discipleship matters. God bless. See you next time by faith. Amen.